Good morning. I'm David. Welcome to church number two of 52 churches in 52 weeks, round three. This past weekend, I drove out to the Kansas City, Independence, Missouri area for this year's Book of Mormon rally that brought together people from various restoration backgrounds. Uh, doing 52 and 52 last time, uh, about a year and a half ago, I visited Independence for the very first time. And as a church nerd, uh, this absolutely fascinated me. But as a lifelong Protestant, I don't know what to make of things. Because the area is surrounded by Book of Mormon believing churches, all due to a plot of land that was designated as a gathering place for all the saints, all from a revelation given to Joseph Smith in 1831 that called for the dedication of a temple for the second coming of Jesus Christ. So again, I didn't know what to make of this, seeing this the first time. But I'll, I did some digging uh, during the weekend and had some pretty strange occurrences happen that I'll share in some future videos. So stay tuned for that. First, I want to mention last week, uh, especially after announcing my baptism uh, into the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and, and essentially being baptized into the Restoration. With all the driving, with all the different churches that I've gone to, uh, this was certainly a detour. And again, a lot of fear. Um, I was quite anxious about the whole experience because everyone that I knew uh, before going into my first ward visit with the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, no one is going to understand it. And it took me two years to start to get things to the point of conviction to actually do this. And the reception with the amount of comments with the messages, with the emails, you name it. Um, I have been the outpouring of support uh, from all those that reached out. I can't say enough good things. And I have been humbled in a way that I have never felt before. So just a genuine heartfelt thank you to all those that reached out. Um, I do not deserve it, but to see that after the baptism, um, I, I, was, I was told that I would be gaining an instant family. And that turned out to be true on such a much wider global scale. So just, wow, I, I can't, I did not expect that at all. So thank you. I know with a public announcement uh, about a conversion, like the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints that isn't extremely popular and very misunderstood among mainstream Christians, uh, I'm still aware I'm probably going to face some attacks coming up and the hammer and nails are going to be coming out. Uh, that said, um, you know, I was thinking a lot about Paul with a letter to the Philippians and I, I've had this peace, um, a, a peace that transcends all understanding and I'm just trying to guard my heart and my mind through Christ Jesus. And I'm hoping with this channel to continue to preach Jesus Christ uh, on this channel going forward. Speaking of which, with last week's baptism, I completely forgot to mention the future for this channel. Uh, when I've done 52 and 52 in the past, uh, typically uh, I, just, I just went with it. You know, I didn't do any long-term planning. I just decided the night before. Uh, this time I had been, I was kind of thinking a, a third round, so I posted a poll a few weeks ago, but I also was set on baptism. And I think that morning I just decided to do both. So I didn't clear anything with my bishop. Um, I still want to take the next steps uh, within my local church. So with this 52 churches, it may end up being much more strategic. Uh, for instance, this past weekend I did four different church visits. Or it, this may also turn out where the 52 weeks may go out the window and it may be an extended amount of time. Either way, I just want to use this channel to preach Christ uh, no matter where I go on this. But I was told with any type of challenge, uh, that creates an opportunity. And I think recently uh, I, I faced some criticism where it's like, oh, you just got baptized for subscribers or what have you. And that's never been the case with this channel. I want to be preaching Christ. So it's been on my heart to maybe do something with charity and fundraisers. So for this round of 52 churches in 52 weeks, obviously YouTube likes the comments, the subscribers, the likes, that all pushes the YouTube algorithm. But what I'm hoping to do for this round 
is to represent Jesus well and to heal those that need it. So I'm going to be teaming up with St. Jude Children's Hospital that focuses on curing childhood cancer and other type of catastrophic diseases. So I kind of figure I'm going to put a, a target of $52,000 to raise. This may fall flat on its face. I've never done any type of fundraiser work before. But if I'm going to be doing all this driving, if you want to support the channel, forget all the YouTube stuff. If we can help heal some families that are struggling, I think that would be much more supportive moving forward. So if you want to donate 52 cents, five dollars and 20 cents, I'm going to start it off with 52 dollars. Just increments of five two, I think, might be kind of fun. So if we can help some families and give them peace and financial protection, I think that would go a long, long way. For this video, I was invited by Patrick McKay. Uh, he's an apostle, though in title only, of the Joint Conference of Restoration Branches, and Casey Griffiths, a BYU professor. So with the Book of Mormon rally, uh, it's two nights. Uh, for the second year in a row, I was invited to speak real briefly on night two. So I'm going to show you a little bit what it looked like and sounded like inside. I'll be back with a brief recap of what this was like. Before I dive into this recap, uh, let me start by saying first, it is so refreshing to see doctrine differences take a back seat and to see people from various different religious backgrounds come united for Christ inside one church. Last year it was busy, but this year both nights were at full capacity. It makes me wonder if they're going to have to find a bigger venue for next year. Uh, but there were members from The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints Community of Christ, the Church of Jesus Christ with the Bickertonite group, and other restoration branches that were represented. And I think to me, this kind of showed the Holy Spirit working inside uh, through everybody that attended. So there are two different nights. The first night, uh, they had four speakers that were scheduled. Uh, the first speaker uh, was a BYU professor named Stefan Tager. And uh, I, I saw him last year, but I didn't get to chat with him. But this year, I did. And his lecture fascinated me because it combined President Russell M. Nelson, uh, the President and Prophet of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and Dr. Timothy Keller, uh, who recently passed away but for a very long time served as a senior pastor of Redeemer Presbyterian Church in Manhattan. And if you read my first 52 and 52 round uh, with the book on Amazon, uh, you'll, you'll remember Keller was probably my biggest influence after com completing that round. Just the way that he talked about forgiveness and just this intellectual, sophisticated, 
angle that he had, especially talking with those from a younger generation, challenged in today's type of day and age. So with President Nelson, uh, and with both of these talks, he was kind of combining Alma and Amulek from the Book of Mormon. So with Nelson's Peacemakers Needed talk from last year's General Conference, it was talking about how you can identify a follower of Christ with how they treat other people. And he kind of talked a little bit about discipleship, but then merged that into Tim Keller and his talk about forgiveness and how real forgiveness, uh, you can essentially entail that through suffering. So to see those worlds of mind kind of combine as I go on this new trek with the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, uh, it kind of blew my socks off to a certain extent. Uh, there was another talker that talked about the Liahona, but I think the, the most impactful talk that I heard was from Jared Halverson. Uh, so he's another BYU professor, but he also hosts a very popular podcast called Unshaken. And he led off kind of jokingly talking about chat GBT. And if his students are using it, he can use it too. And one of the things with ChatGBT is you can enter in any type of question and the AI model will kind of churn out an answer uh, for exactly that you're looking for. So he just put in, tell me about the Book of Mormon. And one thing you can do with it is you can uh, enter in a different type of voice. So for example, uh, it would spew out a answer using a fairy tale theme or a rap or a valley girl type of speak. So it was all just very unusual framing to talk about the Book of Mormon, but he relayed that into some of the first impressions that most people get with the Book of Mormon. He quoted Kristen Stewart from the Twilight movies, basically saying, you know, the, one of the problems when you're famous is everyone has already formed a first impression of you before even meeting you. And that's very true with the Book of Mormon because many people that see the church or see the Book of Mormon relate it to the Book of Mormon musical from a decade ago. So with Trey Parker, um, who is a South Park creator and created the musical, he basically said, Mormons are so Disney to begin with that it makes perfect sense for them to break into song. That's why in many ways, this feels like a traditional musical. You're being cheesy and corny and all, but that's who Mormons naturally are. And when I was hearing this, um, one thing, and maybe this is because I was living under a rock, but I never heard about the Book of Mormon musical uh, over a decade ago. And so my first introduction into the Book of Mormon was when I went to church nearly two years ago into my very first LDS ward. So I didn't have that first impression. So now to see where I am today is pretty bizarre to anyone else, I'm sure. Another thing that he talked about was some of the, the newspapers and the literature that was coming out when Joseph Smith was talking about the Book of Mormon because it was published in 1830. But there was word that reached out in 1829 so some of the publications that first got wind of it would sensationalize this new golden Bible. So one of the, the biggest publications that was kind of considered the mad TV of that time was something called Paul Prize Weekly Bulletin. And it would borrow newspaper type of literature, but then it would twist it to make it sound absolutely ridiculous and bonkers. So as a result, for people that were reading this almost satire type of magazine, the satire newspaper, uh, immediately they were kind of finding this to be a complete joke for the Book of Mormon and everything that Joseph Smith was all about early on in those days. So he finished this talk with something from Orson Spencer. So I had never heard of Orson Spencer in the past, but I guess he was considered, he was probably one of the most highly educated people that joined the church early on because he was a valedictorian of this New York Theological College. And I guess he eventually served three different congregations as pastor in the New England area. 
So when he first started researching the church and researching the Book of Mormon, if it was true, he was going through all different types of literature, especially from those that were combating it and, and claiming the divine origins to be fake. For night two was the actual Book of Mormon rally. And I had been invited to speak for about 10 minutes. And I didn't really have anything planned for my speech. I kind of figured it would just come to me. Well, the first night I saw anyone from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints was all dressed up, you know, with the white shirt and the tie. And now that I've been a member for a week, I kind of figured, well, if I'm going to be talking, I might as well wear the outfit. And I had brought this along uh, for what was going to be my Sunday worship outfit. So that was my speech. So I kind of mentioned, you know, when you visit 52 churches in 52 weeks, you end up with an interesting looking closet. So for instance, when I drove out to Texas to attend a cowboy church, I went on Amazon, I bought a cowboy hat and a cowboy shirt. Um, when I went to hip hop church in Michigan, I, I, I was trying to find a hoodie and an outfit for the right drip, as the kids call it. But I think as one commenter mentioned, you, you looked like an undercover cop, and I probably agree with that. Um, when I visited, um, well, here in Wisconsin, there's a handful of Lutheran churches where the night before deer hunting season, um, they'll bring hunters together for a prayer service, and all the hunters will, will wear their camo and their blaze orange. So I'm not a hunter, but I purposely bought camo and blaze orange just to fit in for that deer hunter's church prayer service. So when it came to the, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, I was not introduced to it by the Book of Mormon musical for that wild first impression. My first entry into it was Google searching what to wear. And if you watch that video, like I had the, the exact tie, this one, when I attended that service. And as a result, my, I didn't have a fir my first impression was inside the church. And it was probably one of the best first impressions I've ever had at any type of church service. So as I continued on with the 52 churches and I visited other restoration branches like Community of Christ, the Church of Jesus Christ with the Bicker Tonight group, and also the Strangite Church, as I was trying to fit and figure out what to wear, like I started to see something else was fitting inside of me. And I think the biggest example of that was General Conference last year for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Because when I went, on, went in on Saturday wearing my Sunday's best and just seeing the street preachers from my Protestant background and just have insults and mockery and scolding as you'd walk in, um, I, I was very taken back by that. And I think more so was the Latter-day Saints are walking in who didn't engage with that type of conduct. And then the second day on Sunday, I changed my outfit. So then I looked like one of the Protestants. And I, I basically just kind of looked around, kind of see how they organized um, before people started walking in and walking out. And I just remember thinking, like this, this doesn't fit for my heart because like I always thought with, with scripture, with the Bible, like you want to be exemplifying peace and joy and love and kindness, not what this has mutated into with the mockery and the insulting and the yelling. Like for me, I just didn't understand like how, how this could have happened. And I, I think what happened from that is like it planted a seed inside of me. Uh, one thing that I've never engaged with is th there seems to always be this argument about what the right translation of the Bible is. Is it the NIV? Is it the King James? Is it something else? But what I started to, to realize is like it, it just the Book of Mormon translates into people's hearts differently. Are people perfect? No you're going to be offended. I've been, I've been told that multiple times now uh, from my last baptism video, and I appreciate that for the reminder. But I think overall, it's like, how does scripture translate into your heart? Like that President Nelson talk that Stefan Tager mentioned, where it's like, you can see 
the fruits, you can see how a disciple is how compassionately they treat other people. Golden rule, treat others the way that you want to be treated. And I think for me, like I started to see this seed with the Book of Mormon. Is it the Book of Mormon, Jesus Christ? Like I see the fruits, you know? I see how that, that translates. And it's like, it's not necessarily that you can see the actual seed in the ground because it's already grown up and produced something completely entirely different. So for me, it's like, I, I want to taste that fruit. I want to grab that iron rod. I want to see where this leads to. When I first visited Independence, uh, one of the very first places I walked into uh, was a visitor center for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And when you walk in, there's this giant white marble Christus statue of Jesus Christ. And I remember the very first time that I was looking at that because for me at that time as a Protestant, like I'm seeing something different within the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, but I didn't quite have a finger on it. So I was examining the hands in that video when I first visited that. And I'm kind of like, I mentioned in other videos, um, I, I think there's a little bit of an apostle inside of all of us. So even for the Christians who may attack, it's like they're coming from a good place. They're being Simon Peters, you know, especially when it came to protecting Jesus Christ with the Roman soldier. But if you cut off the ear, how are you supposed to dialogue? How are you supposed to heal? And Christ was all about healing. So for me, I've always kind of identified as Matthew in the past. But when it came to the church, I, I found myself in this weird territory where I'm doubting Thomas and I'm examining things. So on Saturday, I went back in there and just re-examined that statue again. Like, what am I looking at? What is this? And for me, having now completed the second round of 52 churches in 52 weeks and now starting this third round, I don't know what's going to turn into, but I want to be leading as, as much of an example of Jesus Christ as possible. And if Jesus was about anything, it was about healing. So I'm hoping, and again, with the St. Jude fundraiser, I don't know what's going to turn out of it, but I, I think with the church and the restoration churches that I've seen, it's fine-tuning my heart, so to speak. And, like, I don't know what it is, but there, there's something new inside of me. And I'm hoping that, that with this channel, maybe we can bring healing to other people. That's going to wrap up church number two. Hope you enjoyed this episode, looking into the Book of Mormon rally around the Independence, Missouri area. I made several visits during this weekend, so the next one is going to be focused on the temple lot. And that one may be one of the more bizarre, strange episodes that you'll ever see from this channel. I don't know what anyone's going to think about that one, but stay tuned for that one next week. But until next time, hope you have a good one.